What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little passes at this is a dead meat. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Chucky Season 2 After Show here on Dead Meat. Today, we're talking about Episode 4, Death on Denial, with one of our favorite additions and members of the Chucky family, Fiona Doriff. Hey, Fiona. Hi! I'm so happy to be here. So <laughs> happy to talk to you. Fiona, of course, plays Nika Pierce and all the many iterations of Nika possessed by Chucky. Also, young Charles Lee Ray in season one, maybe more in season two. But yeah, I mean it when I say your addition to the Chucky franchise is just as good as Jennifer Tilly's addition in Bride. You bring so much life and love to the, the franchise, and I think everyone loves Nika Pierce as a character. Oh, thanks, man. I mean, I think Nika Pierce needs the love. So many bad things have happened oh my <laughs> gosh that was something we wanted to ask you about is like i mean by this point in the series poor nika she feels like such a punching bag almost <laughs> yeah. like don what are you doing <laughs> what was the fan reaction like this you know the end of last season the end of last season i mean i thought when he first pitched it to me there was some kind of like guffaw laughter um <laughs> and then and then wait really <laughs> there was that moment it was like wait really you're gonna chop off all of the my arms and legs. I thought that it was it was going to be such a cool ending. I was like you have to do it. It was such a great shocking way for it to turn that everybody realized we had to actually do it. From my end, it was basically fine. I got a, a lot of like consolement. There was people who were really, really wanted to let me know that they felt bad for me. It wasn't fair. And then Don said he got a few aggressive. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what he mentioned when we talked to him. Yeah, I know he goes to the, it's a horror series. Bad things happen to good people. But it's like, <laughs> poor Nika, man, <laughs> just getting the run of it. I mean, I have had it so rough you know so rough but he keeps changing up things for me to do which is really great when you play a character for this long so I'm never bored it's it's not like I know exactly what to do each season or each installment for me you know he keeps it fresh and it's really cool and I still I still love her I mean mm -hmm. she she has fighting spirit left and has a lot of places to go this season yeah especially after this uh most recent episode where now you at least have some arms to work with some kind of yeah uh, you've got like a David Cronenberg it made me think of Videodrome I don't know if you've seen Videodrome but he ends up with a, an arm where it's got like the gun at the end oh, and yeah. that's what I thought of yeah 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 no that was that that reference was thrown around for sure okay um, yeah those prosthetics were incredibly uncomfortable and hard to deal with but they looked really cool and went through a lot of different iterations and we we found one that we liked it's not like a you know just a regular kind of fleshy prosthetic where you have some give this is just you can move your arm here at the elbow maybe at the wrist if that and it looks kind of narrow does it is it constructed as well. Yeah. And also it takes about uh, 12 minutes to get in and out of. Mm -hmm. So as soon as they put the prosthetics on me, I cannot go to the bathroom. Oh, I can't no. open a door. I can't pick anything up. I'm completely incapacitated. And so I have a, a like, you know, a production assistant or whatever, or, um, to Neil, who was um, the prosthetics woman, who also was uh, her and Francois, and they were there who created Charles E. Ray and do a lot of the practical effects on the show. Oh, cool. So the burnt bodies and et cetera, that's all uh, to Neil and Francois. But to Neil would put me in the arms and then follow me around and I'd be like, open that door, close that door. And often I would have to be masked with the prosthetics oh oh no. because of COVID. Oh, <laughs> God. Sure. Yeah. It was quite an experience. Sometimes I got grumpy, but I was mostly <laughs> not. And was that you actually using them to push the wheelchair as well? Yeah. So I'm going to give you guys all the secrets. Yeah, please. Um, when I'm uh, the escape scene, which was really fun to shoot and shot like from two in the morning until five in the morning. So it was in the middle of the night, but everyone knew how cool it looked. So we were really excited. The prosthetics are only on half of my arms. So my palm is in a black glove 
and it's like 50 degrees out <laughs> and I'm actually moving the wheelchair. Okay. Okay. For a lot of it. Sometimes it's on a pulley and yeah, and that's a long driveway. Yeah. And how, it seemed like you were going pretty fast. Were you getting up to speed there? <laughs> I think I was just hauling ass. Yeah. I mean, I, I think so. It felt that way to me anyway. And every time I would try to turn a corner, I'd be like, maybe I'm going to die. This is the moment. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you ever fall? Do you ever have any uh, wheelchair spills in all your time doing this role? Oh, yeah. I would do dumb things when I was like in between takes and try to do wheelies mm-hmm. and stuff. I've fallen that way. But no, um, they're pretty protective. Sure. That, that <laughs> makes like, sense. Don't do anything. So we have to stop shooting. <laughs> the production insurance just. Uh... Yeah. And the continuity person is just like, please <laughs> don't nick the wheelchair. No, the big joke actually was um, if I got hurt, it just didn't matter. Yeah, sure. sure yeah. If you yeah. sprained an ankle, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I would have to get really hurt to stop production. I'm curious in scenes where, uh, you know, before you get these these prosthetics put on and you are, you essentially have no use of your arms or legs. Does that affect your performance at all? Like, do you have to constantly remind yourself, like, I can't use my hands to emote or I can't, you yeah, know. Yeah, because on set you're wearing like green sleeves and green socks that'll get keyed out. Often I'm sitting on my hands or my hands are behind my back kind of locked in. And I became very aware of how much we gesticulate. Mm-hmm. I would rehearse or, or think about a scene in my apartment before the night before a few days before and then I would realize that I can't move any I I would notice the difference between the two for sure sure. yeah it takes away a lot of an actor's ability to express themselves when you can't use those limbs yeah exactly yeah and and Jennifer is such a um she's such a strong and unpredictable actress to 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 be playing with right like everything's different and new in a way that's really exciting and wonderful yeah it keeps you on your toes but for me on my Stubs. (laughs) Stubs. Yeah. <laughs> on oh, no. my torso. Right on my torso. Yeah. Right. I know. I am sad that we don't get to interview you and Jennifer together. No, we couldn't make it work. I have seen, I, I've done so much research on this series and I've watched so many interviews. And whenever you and her are together, it just seems like an absolute blast. You guys have such good chemistry and you're always like, even in the, the big group interviews, it's like you two are in your own little world, like making the sides. <laughs> and it, it's my favorite thing. No, I, I, I really love love her and also you never know um if you're going to have chemistry while kissing somebody I, I had no aversion to it at all right like it was easy in a way that was that felt lucky and I I just really she's also such a cool person I, I realize that every actor says that about every actor in, in an almost boring way but Jennifer Tilly uh is very cool and generous oh man we're so excited to we're gonna talk to her soon and it is funny like while we were talking about oh no poor Nika like it's so terrible what happens to her I don't know I'm sure there's some fans who would argue you know you're kind of you're stuck in Jennifer Tilly's bedroom like that's not the worst <laughs> right. she's taking care of you making you cake or whatever she's baking that <laughs> Probably episode. Swedish meatballs. It really is right. <laughs> Are you kidding me? She's torturing me. She's coming <laughs> Pepto Bismo pink room. <laughs> Jennifer Tilly slash uh Tiffany. Mm-hmm. Well, at this point, it's basically Tiffany. It's Tiffany yeah. all the time. But I like how they're melding the two. No, she she deserves some come up and oh my god yeah <laughs> oh, for she's sure. like truly evil i think i feel like maybe the you know in, in bride or stuff where it's like you have like just her and chucky it's so easy to see her as less of a villain well, and especially you, in siege she's ex- like trying to not kill yeah exactly right and she just wants to have a family you know with with glenn and glenda and you kind of forget that she is also just a bad person and that's why they're drawn to each other in the first place yeah but at least she's out now with uh the confirmation i've known it all along that Kyle survived that blast. We never saw a body. Yeah. So good to have her back. Can't wait to see that team up. And that's the great thing about Don's writing is that he has so many characters and players on the board at this point that to have them matched up in different ways is really exciting to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has an incredible skill at it, actually, is like pairings that are not obvious and that will shift and relationships that (laughs) will exist in the way that you think and then the opposite. And I know that, uh, for instance, Alex Vincent said he was really excited to work with you, even though you only had the one scene together oh, in Cult. Oh, Cult, yeah. yeah. But he was really excited to work with you. I'm sure 
everyone is. You've gotten to work with a lot because uh, Devin and Junior's actors you got to work with at the end of season one who were both fantastic. I really liked Teo's performance and I, I miss oh, that. He I miss great. that kid, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was he was he was wonderful. He was wonderful. I both loved and hated him. Sure. Yeah, I mean, the kids are great. They're so compelling. Even, you know, more so this season. It's just uh yeah, and and Bella Higginbottom. Oh my god, she's so sweet. She's a delight. Yeah, <laughs> it's wild how much the kids really have to kind of. I feel like maybe any other series, it would be the kids who are in a storyline that feels a bit wackier or, but the kids are really kind of bringing the, maybe like weight or keeping, you know, the story grounded. Whereas like you and and Jennifer are often like the Madonna in or like this weird <laughs> kind of, you know, that's what, that's what our house reminds me of at least this kind of sixties looking hotel. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Oh my God. And, and each room, I mean, the production design on the film, on the, on the series is, is wonderful. And the house that that was shot in, which is up in Toronto is in, in one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in one of the wealthiest actually districts in North America. I mean, Toronto is Toronto real estate is insane, Mm -hmm. but it was the one house that clearly was built in like 1971 and not yet taken down. It looks like maybe an organ. It looks like a standing organ from far <laughs> yes, away. Yes, it does. It's bizarre. I really like it, though. Yeah, it was. It, it's by far the coolest kind of strangest house in the neighborhood. Yeah, and we made that that episode of television directed by Don Mancini himself. Oh, did he direct this one? Okay. That makes complete sense it, to me. It does, because he has such a knack for camp. We were yes, talking about... Yes, he... Don is one of the few people making stuff now. Because I don't know if you remember when the Met Gala, I think it was like a couple years ago, they had the theme of camp. And it just felt like everyone kind of missed the mark because camp is a really hard thing to properly do, you know, as easy as it may be to like define, but to actually make something campy is so hard. Like I think of John Waters as camp, and, yeah. but Don understands camp. And this episode is just like up here camp. It's nuts. <laughs> the title cards are bright pink. Like it's yes. amazing. And Yeah. And the, I mean, there were so many callbacks to old Hollywood in a way that I thought was really, was really great. And I wonder how much the younger generation will pick it up. I hope they do. I mean, even the, like the 19th, 30s silent movie cards yeah. before each act, which I thought was like a beautiful choice. Mm-hmm. You know, Death on Denial, the Agatha Christie, old Hollywood. And then also, you know, old, our generation of Hollywood with, you know, these, these actors that um, from Bound, which was like, <laughs> What year was Bound? Uh, I think it was early 90s. Yeah, right? that seems right. I've never actually seen it, but I love this payoff because Bound has been mentioned since Seed of Chucky. <laughs> yeah. It got referenced in the first season of Chucky. And now we have <laughs> Gina Gershon showing up. Mm-hmm. It's so funny. And I know I, I was- And Joey. I mean, that, that all three of them, they were the, they were the couple. They were, it was those, it was those three. Oh, Joey I didn't Pant. even realize. Okay, because yeah, yeah, like yeah, I said, I haven't seen like it. They're both like fighting over her. Oh. <laughs> Oh it, was the, it was the reunion from Bound. And then also the Meg Tilly relationship. Mm-hmm. Like, yes. That's so, so great. Funny. <laughs> to have I know uh, Jennifer just posted a picture of them two together and said it's the first time they've worked together since high school, that they've like wow. acted together in something. And I mean, it's just, it's another continuation of Don having actual family members like you and your mm-hmm. dad be a part of this franchise that very much feels like a family affair. People have been asking me this question forever. Like what, what does this feel like? And it it's, it's been a little bit surreal for 12 years because I've been, you know, my dad is Chucky obviously. So I I've been associated with it. Like I, I, you know, make a little bit of money from it <laughs> and it's become a little bit of my social life. If I also uh, know Nick Antosca really well. I go way back with him. And so it's like, we get to make this thing that's really fun to make. And also people like it, which it feels like winning a lottery. That's what it feels like. It feels like winning some kind of weird lottery that keeps paying out. And I think it's a, a credit to Don's perseverance because, I, you know, the series went through a bit of a rough patch uh, in, in the general public's idea. I think that in retrospect, like the last time I watched Seed, I'm like, 
it's not that bad. You know, like it, it's making decisions. <laughs> I think it's a little, I think people weren't ready for that for sure. either. Definitely. I think now, I think in retrospect, people really appreciate, especially Glenn and Glenda. Yeah, but it definitely, you know, put him in almost a director's jail, but thankfully he stuck with it. And even though he got condemned, big air quotes, to like a direct-to-video, direct-to-streaming releases, he made some of the best movies in the series with you, with Curse and Cult. And then I think that now it's finally getting the recognition it deserves with the TV show. Because I feel like Curse and Cult came out and the horror fans were like, this is really good. And a lot of people were like, oh, it's direct. I, I don't believe you. But now that the show is out, people are like, oh, oh, no, this is really good. And I feel like finally Chucky has reclaimed his position as like top tier horror franchise. What we see is so, sort of the numbers of how many people end up watching each year. And it's actually been a pretty clear snowball of popularity yeah. um, for Chucky. There's conversations between us in private, which is like, what is it? Why does he keep getting more and more popular? You know, um, and I, I think it's a, a, a lot of a testament to Dawn. I think his writing is is clever and it's also, it's careful. He doesn't want to do the same thing over and over. He tries to like re reinvent. And I don't, I'm too close to it to understand. Sure. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I'm grateful for it. I, I think it's because the series to me, especially now with the TV show, feels it's sensitive without being sad. Macarin. The key line or scene to like the series success is when Chucky is talking uh, in the in the very first season where he's talking about how he has a kid and they're gen. I can't do the voice. Gender fluid. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And that just I just saw that everywhere. And I just think it's that balance of we respect you and who you are. But this series is still mean and Chucky is still mean. And it's such a great balance and I think people have been really craving that. I, I think that line and then it's it's kind of a bookmark of uh defining the tone of the series and why it's resonating so well. That line at the beginning of the series and then in the final episode when Jake is choking Chucky or right before he does and he's saying like my dad might have accepted me had he ever met Devin and then Chucky's response of that is so gay. Like <laughs> that shows that Dodd is is fine making fun of itself like with the uh the butler character in this episode. Oh, so funny. It's so funny. Just those conversations. He's not afraid to have those conversations. A, a hundred percent. It's open, but not politically correct, right? Yeah. It's not this, it, it's not like walking this kind of, you know, exhaustive line that you see a lot of shows doing. You know, it's, it, it, we're, it's, it's fun. It, I mean, the series has always been fun. It doesn't take him to itself too seriously. It is, I think a Thing, a reason why people like Chucky, at least this is what my dad thinks, <laughs> is because Chucky is just having the best time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He loves his job and his job is to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only advice my dad gave me when I was playing Charles E. Ray. He was like, listen, kid, he loves his job. Chucky is doing a lot of modern things, which is another testament to, I think, why it's so popular is that Don is able to keep his thumb on the pulse of uh, the modern zeitgeist and culture. But Chucky's running around taking selfies and talking about Uber and stuff like that. Is there anything that you've had to explain to your dad? Like, did your dad know what a twink was before he <laughs> delivered that line? Probably not, right? <laughs> so, so, so a secret about Brad Dourif is he is a hermit. He is oh. a hermit. We cannot get him off this mountain. You know, um, so so everybody kind of like scurries up to 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 Woodstock where he lives to um to 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 do voices and every once in a while you can get him down go down to New York City but um but yeah he will um he's hard to, he's hard for me to get on the phone yeah. I mean I don't I don't see how in God's name he could have found out what a tweak was <laughs> and also how did Don explain it right yeah so it's <laughs> So it's a gay guy, but specifically. <laughs> I would love to be a fly on the wall for their recording sessions. I bet they're so much fun. What's nuts though is that he's able to deliver it in a way that you don't question it. Yeah. Like uh -huh. he sells it. It's great. What did you guys think of Good Chucky? We love Good. I was just about to bring up Nice Chucky. Yeah. So sweet. Your dad's voice performance is so cute and his little actions and he's eating the crisp apple and he's talking about Mr. Pasta or whatever. Or the cat. Dude, yeah. if that, if Good Chucky really is dead i'm hoping he's not but there will be fan outrage Dude, because... I, yeah the fans are gonna i mean if you thought the outrage over nika losing her <laughs> yeah. arms and legs was bad if anything happens to nice chucky it's over <laughs>
<laughs> and what do you guys think of if you were to lose one, you had one or the other, would you, would you, would you lose Colonel Chucky or, or good Chucky? Which one do you guys feel more emotionally attached to? Ooh, well, I don't know if we know exactly who Colonel Chucky is. Um, is it buff Chucky? Cause Oh yeah, because that's who okay. he's texting and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Buff yeah. Buff Chucky's so funny. Buff Chucky's hilarious. Like, the idea of that is so funny. But I, I mean, nice Chucky is is top of my list for mm-hmm. favorite Chucky's. You know what? I, I want to like revisit this uh, <laughs> in a few more weeks. First, yes. Oh, oh god. <laughs> okay. We'll see how we feel. Oh man, I know that we're just about out of time. I wish that we had more time to talk about you playing young Charles Lee Ray, because yeah. I'm sure that that was uh, an experience. I'll be in therapy for the rest of my life. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> right, how bizarre, yeah. I know that Don was at first reluctant to cast you just because he was worried, like, am I doing it just because she's Brad's daughter? I know that you auditioned for Barb at first. you three times. Oh, yeah, you auditioned three times for Nika? Went back 12 years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. for Curse, yeah. 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 But, yeah, yeah. I mean, the fact that you... He cast you, I think, really opened up a door to so many possibilities we wouldn't have had otherwise. Don said that it was because of my laugh. That's right. So in mm-hmm. real life, I have this, uh, I have this like loud cackle that yeah. you can hear from, um, for good or for bad. But <laughs> but but it's my real laugh, and he that's why that's what gave him the idea. Was there ever any discussion of having anyone else play young Charles Lee Ray? Or at that point, was it just kind of written for you? I think it was a conversation with the studio. It was an idea, but yeah, it wasn't set in stone. I mean, okay. if anything, they were worried it was going to be confusing. And, you know, if like, there's a lot of elements that that has to, that have to work for it to not be dumb. Right. <laughs> and it's, it's a testament to Francois and to Neil um, that it worked. On the the note of your laugh, we met you in 2019, 18 oh, at we Texas were at Frightmare. Texas Frightmare. When there was a bunch of Chucky people there. Yeah. And I remember we were walking up to you at your table right when you like had to duck behind the curtain because you got a phone call about a job or like a role that you had just <laughs> Yes, gotten. yeah. We were standing there when that happened. Yeah. And so you were you were in such high spirits then and you you did that laugh and it was just like Yep, that's the laugh. And yeah. you're sitting next to your dad. He was at the next table over. It was an amazing experience. The purge is when I got the job for the oh, purge. Shit. Oh, really shit. Wondering. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, my gosh. Now I can stop wondering. <laughs> yeah, right? We've always wondered <laughs> since that day, like, wonder what role that mm-hmm. was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got to play a cult leader that killed children. And oh thus, my, my career continues. Yeah. yeah. I'm so happy to kill as many things as I can on television. I, I, I deeply, deeply enjoy it. <laughs> Well, I hope you continue to get more recognition and work because honestly, the performances you've put on in in the movies and the shows show your amazing uh, just breath as as an actor. Yeah, you're doing like nesting doll type roles where you're playing a a person playing another person playing, you know, it's like all the permutations. Yeah, it's a little bit orphan black. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Tatiana Zlani where she's playing like seven different iterations of herself in that. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that like not only Nika pretending to be Chucky, but then Chucky pretending to be Nika near the end. Like (laughs) it's so fun. It's it's amazing. And you nail it every time. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm so glad you like it. I hope everybody keeps watching it. We love making it. So thank you guys for the support. And that comes through. I mean, I think that's why it's so successful is because everyone can tell this is a group of people having a lot of fun making something. Also, Don Mancini. Really, really. I I give him so much credit. Oh, we are number one Don stands in this house. We are a Don fan club over here. (laughs) He's so wonderful. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. We're really enjoying the show. It was a pleasure. Thank you, guys. You have a good one. (laughs) Yeah. You too. Yes, you too. Bye, <laughs> and our next guest for today's after show is a guest who we've been wanting to interview for a very long time, the incredible Jennifer Tilly. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, guys. How are you? So good. good. It's an honor to meet you, like we were just saying. You know, you're someone who was brought into the Chucky series four movies in, and I honestly don't think we'd still be getting new Chucky material if it wasn't for you. You just breathed so much life into it. Oh, well, you give me too much credit, but little did I know when I did Bride of Chucky 23 years ago that I would still be doing it 23 years later. And especially because Tiffany died at the end of Bride of Chucky, I thought, well, that was the end of that. What's next? (laughs) What's next? What's next? And then Don Mancini, I became very good friends with him and he called me up and goes, Jennifer, I want to put you in the new Chucky movie because 
He thought the reason Bride of Chucky was so successful is because I was there in all my fleshly glory. So he's racking his brains like, how can I get Jennifer in another Chucky movie in a human form? So he came up with the idea that Tiffany is Jennifer Tilly's biggest fan and that she crawls inside my body, as those fans do, and becomes me. (laughs) And he just loved that idea. And then for the next uh, three movies, I was Tiffany and Jennifer Tilly's body in season one and season two. And as you see in episode four, which you saw. Um, yeah, she's living in Jennifer Tilly's palatial mansion, trailing around in her fabulous ball gowns, going through all her money, you know, <laughs> behaving very badly, essentially destroying Jennifer Tilly's career. So it's just, we have a lot of fun with that. And then on episode four, Don came up with the idea to have my actual real friends show up and stage an intervention. The fabulous and delightful Miss Sutton Strack, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, which was so much fun. Uh, Joey Pantoliana, Gina Gersh. Sean that I did Bound With, which is a super cult film. And if you're a Chucky fan, you see that Don referenced it um, in Seed of Chucky, Cult of Chucky, season one. He's obsessed with that film. So he was (laughs) thrilled to get Joey and Gina to come on board. And then my real life sister, Oscar nominated actress Meg Tilly that I have never, ever acted with since high school. So it's just a potpourri, a grab bag of fabulous guest stars um, in episode four, which you all have just seen. It was really a fun romp. That was actually one of our first questions was, whose idea was it to bring in all your real life friends? And it sounds like it was Don's. It was Don's idea. I mean, everyone thinks like, I came to him and said, hey, (laughs) can you put my sister in the show? He came up with the idea and I was like, oh, well, that sounds really great. And I felt like with everybody, I felt like you're never going to get them. Number one, my sister Meg does not like horror films, even though she started. She's very beloved by the horror film community because she started Psycho 2, Mm -hmm. Invasion of the Body Snatchers, One Dark Night and Afterbirth. So she was very surprised. Like some of my Chucky fans started trickling over to her. She has a YouTube show called Makes Cozy Tea Time, which is like (laughs) so Meg because she likes everything to be cozy. She doesn't like violence. She hasn't seen any of my Chucky movies because she can't stand if anybody's going to get killed. She's like, oh, no, oh, no. Like we put on a movie like with last time I was at her house. And I think it was uh, Robert Altman, the movie about oh, oh, McCabe yeah. and Mrs. Miller. He goes, I think someone's going to get hurt. I think someone's going to get hurt. And I looked it up. I said, no, there's hardly any violence at all. And we watch about two minutes and they started to set up a poker game. And she goes, mm-hmm. I can't take it. There's <laughs> Violence and she ran out of the room. But so Meg doesn't like horror. So I thought she's not going to really want to be in the Chucky series. But she was so excited because she's always wanted to work with me. And she loved the idea of playing herself. She had a Zoom with Dawn. She loved Dawn. And she knows Dawn's my really good friend. Then Joey and Gina, I didn't think they'd ever want to do it because they're not known for doing television. And, you know, they 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 work all the time. And they're complicated people. You know, I love them both. and But I didn't think that they would want to guest star on an episode of Chucky, even though we all know how fabulous Chucky is. But, you know, some people, they don't know yet. The word has not gone out that Chucky is the most fabulous show on television. But then they wanted to do it. I was so happy and thrilled. And then Sutton, she has a full schedule with Real Housewives. And she goes, I'm clear my schedule. I'm clear my schedule. I want to do this. It was so funny to have Sutton on the set because she's never acted before. But she was a natural. She loved being on the set. She loves Chucky. She loves Don. It was a big love fest. I, I, you probably show us on the screen that we were all having so much fun. Absolutely. That's. I think that's one of the biggest appeals of the show for me is you can tell how much everyone loves it. And I'm shocked that was her first time acting, honestly. Yeah, she did she great. She was a natural, wasn't she? And yeah. she was doing like little ad libs. There was a scene that was cut out where Joey says to me, Jen, you never even you never even answered when I sent you my dick pics. And he pulls out his phone <laughs> to show me the dick pics. And, and then he said he ran over to show it to Sutton because go show it to Sutton. So he runs over to show it to Sutton and Sutton's looking at him. And you think she would go, ew. But she goes, hmm, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really funny moment that she ad lib, but I I don't think it ended up in the film. But everybody got to do a lot of ad libs when Gina Gershon was doing all that. Oh, oh, my little frow line. All that stuff wasn't that in the so script. That's so fun. Oh wait, yeah, I think she does kind of like a she does a voice in it. You yeah, know? she does like a Cockney accent, doesn't That's she? That's right. Oh, she does yes. a Cockney yes. accent. She's like, well, you know, Governor, <laughs> let's see who did. And she so she's doing a lot of different voices, and that was her idea. And when she goes. 
that's going to be a bumpy ride. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't in the script. She liked the idea of herself as somebody that was always doing voices. So that was fun when she's like, oh, oh, English. Leave skin, my little Fraulein. <laughs> I think she even walked out, wandered out singing Falling in Love again. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to sing it here because you probably don't want to pay the royalties. But I think <laughs> it might not have ended up in the movie for the same reason. And then Joey was hysterical. I mean, originally Don wrote in the episode that I make out with Gina mm-hmm. and then I make out with Joey, like kissing. And Except for in these troubled COVID times, we decided it was maybe better that we weren't doing kissing. And I was very happy because I had sparkly glitter re lipstick on. <laughs> and also like Joey and Gina are my really good friends. It's okay to kiss like an actor you don't really know. But when someone's your good friend for over 20 years and I know Joey's wife, Nancy. <laughs> so we came up with a thing that I thought was really better. Like Don came up with the idea that uh, Gina would like put her hand under my skirt. I hate this word. Don loves this word. But Gina would be fingering me. <laughs> fingering me it's instead not very of romantic <laughs> it's not a really good word for the kitties but no. what the, not a super like pg rated show but it was actually really funny and our lips get very close in a parody of bound mm-hmm. and then with joey they were like how about you know joey's like dry humping you instead and we had that part where he goes where i say oh do you know who killed the butler and he goes i'll tell you if you suck my dick yeah. i said to joey i go joey joey because he had you know his pants down around his ankles i say how far apart can you get his legs? He mm-hmm. goes, pretty far. Why? And I said, why don't you push my head down? You know, like guys do. And then I'll crawl between your legs and get away. But he's so polite. He was sort of like patting my head. Like he's sort of like, like that. And I go, no, you have to push it straight down like whack-a-mole because it's more comedic <laughs> that way. He goes, oh, that's really rude. He goes, guys really do that. And I'm like, uh, yes, <laughs> guys do that. But it was fun because we we're always thinking of ways to make things funny. And we lost a little time because Joey was originally supposed to um, die in the pool, like as a homage to Sunset, Sunset Boulevard. Boulevard. Yeah, I was okay. gonna, yeah, like face down. Yeah. The pool. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it was, it was a problem with the under pool equipment came on the wrong day. And then we mm. got a little behind. So but I think it's really fabulous the way that he dies with it with the feathers, you know, where Gina's shooting him. Actually, Gina said when they said, asked her if she wanted to do the show, she said, I'll do it, but only if I can kill Joey. Really? That was her <laughs> stipulation for being on the show. Yeah. Well, I know that back in Seed, when you do have that line with the, the Gina Kershaw is fingering me and that you were a little hesitant to say it and Don. I didn't like to say it. I'm a lady. I hate yeah. that word. But Don, you know, he's a gay man. He loves that word. He thinks it's a very funny word. I guess speaking of the, the comedy in the show, one of my favorite runners is you watching your scene from Liar Liar multiple yeah. times and just kind of relishing in it when there's parts in the scripts that are kind of poking fun at you. I know you said it was Don's idea to bring on all of your friends. Are you kind of working with the writers to make, or do they just kind of come to you like, here's this goofy Oh idea my gosh, no, that was totally Don's idea. I loved it. It's I loved so the great. idea. That she went in the closet, found the Liar Liar outfit, and this is her <laughs> ritual. <laughs> And then she started thinking she was Jennifer Tilly and she sang the lines alongside <laughs> of the uh, alongside of the real Jennifer Tilly, but really badly. And then she's really delusional. I think there's another scene we cut out where she's watching Liar Liar and she says, Jim Carrey said, I'm the best actress he ever worked with. Even better than Nicole Kidman, yeah. which is funny because I don't think Jim Carrey ever worked with Nicole Kidman. <laughs> and uh, so it's it's really funny. Like, but some of the lines in Seed of Chucky, like I was helping him come up with some of the lines that were derogatory towards me because I like I'm very self-deprecating. I like to make fun of myself. But I just thought that was kind of genius that she's obsessed with Liar Liar. And also Liar Liar is a universal film mm-hmm. and Chucky is a universal series. And also Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is from uh, Universal. That's how we managed to get Sutton Strap. Oh, they love yeah. the idea of a cross promotion. Yeah. And I I don't watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, but I have checked out their communities online and saw that a lot of people want you to be on the show. Show. Is that something you would ever do? Or <laughs> I'm a housewife super fan. And I was so excited <laughs> when one of my best friends in the last 15 years was going to be on Housewives. I actually helped her with her audition. Oh, and no. the audition is they throw Sutton throws a dinner party, invite some of her friends, and Lisa Rinna came for the audition too. And they film it. And I was like, oh my God, it's just like being on the real housewives. And then I was in a couple episodes, mm-hmm. but then I was like, I must not do that anymore because of my ego. When you show up 
to the party, you're basically an extra. The parties are just backdrops for them to all stand around and argue with each other. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't even matter. I don't think I would want to be on the show just because it's so fun to watch but I don't, my uh, Sutton is a steel magnolia and she <laughs> loves, she totally rises to challenge. She loves the fans. She loves waking up in the morning at five in the morning and like, got to drive to Santa Barbara. You know, she just loves being a housewife. But I think for myself, being an actress is probably not the right move. But mm. I, I'm so flattered when the fans go, we want Jennifer on The Real House. <laughs> and sometimes I fantasize about it. Yeah, we're my cute outfits and I'll come on and I'll say funny things. Oh, but I'll stay out of the drama. But, you know, <laughs> you can never see out of the drama. If you're a housewife that sees out of the drama, you're one and done. They fire you. I would love to see housewife drama at the World Series of Poker. That's right. Real Housewives Let's of the World Series of Poker. Yes. That's what I would oh, watch for sure. Wouldn't that be delightful? Yeah. Because we, yeah. we are huge poker fans. Yeah, we love poker. Uh, I have, I've been a, a huge poker fan poker fans since high school and so we admire so much your success in in <laughs> oh, the in the field thank you. oh my gosh i just filmed um i filmed for four days a uh, high stakes poker which is coming up but it's behind a paywall it's on poker go oh but we have poker, we have go. poker go don't, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> oh, they're, they're, you're, you're gonna see some bleeding you know because the games are so they're so volatile and but i just love sitting down my favorite people to play poker with. I had an episode where I played with Bobby Baldwin and JRB, Broke Living JRB. Those two are so funny together. I love playing Daniel Negreanu, love playing with, and, you know, and then Bill Perkins, these guys. But also it's such a thrill to be playing with Phil Ivey yeah. and uh, Doyle Brunson, like giants oh, in the business. Mm-hmm. It's so much fun. It's really bad because it spoiled me for playing regular poker you know when you play high stakes poker is like poker on crack mm-hmm. and then when you're plunking around i used to have a game where we play 25 50 cents with my friends and we that game kind of dribbled off it's like it's just not so much fun to win three dollars and 75 cents yeah when you're used to winning three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars in a pot so yeah, but poker's a great game. Yeah, we'll play with friends and they'll often be like, can't we just play for fun? And we're like, no, no that's you not can't. a thing. You that's, have to have stakes. There have to be stakes. <laughs> Don actually put a lot of people, put poker, he put poker references in mm-hmm. I think, season one. I'm playing a poker game with Fiona, which I won, of course, because of I'm course. Jennifer Tilly. Yep. <laughs> Nobody ever wins against me. <laughs> and then um, and then he he made he makes a reference to it in, uh, in, in the episode you saw. Yeah, you have debts. <laughs> Jennifer, are you avoiding me because of that gambling debt? Don't worry about it. But I ad lib because this is what poker players will say. What? I already paid you. I don't owe you any money. (laughs) It's very, very hard. Lots of times people just have um, selective amnesia when they own people money. A lot of times people own money all over, you know. You're more than welcome to come over and steal all of our money at poker night at our house. It would be such an honor. (laughs) Well, you know, it is really fun to play. There's nothing better than sitting around playing poker with friends. It's the best. Until it gets ugly, until someone pulls a shiv. (laughs) (laughs) Until somebody calls the cops, then you get busted for playing an illegal home game with Ray. But you know, it's fun until that happens. Right. (laughs) How excited are you to have Glenn and Glenda back into the mix? Because they haven't been there in person since Seed. Don has been plotting and trying to bring back Glenn Glenda. And Glenn Glenda was ahead of their time mm-hmm. because oh, yeah. we've started to find out that Glenn Glenda is very, very beloved in the trans community because it's one of the first times that they saw themselves represented up on screen. Times have changed when we came up with Seed of Chucky. We were ahead of our time. The studio didn't like Glenn Glenda, kind of didn't understand, thought it. The whole seat of Chucky was a bit over the top, a bit campy, too too campy, too funny, too gay. (laughs) And they said too much Jennifer Tilly. Mm. Um, So we've come (laughs) a long ways. And I think the fans are so much fan anticipation about Glenn Glenda. And both Glenn Glenda, now they're twins, 18-year-old twins, are played by the wonderful performer Lachlan Watson that people remember from the chilling adventures of Sabrina. Mm -hmm. And Lachlan is also non-binary. So it's um, really wonderful to have them on the show playing the character. And they are so good. So amazing. So cool. Like sometimes um, Lachlan is so cool and I'm hanging around. I'm like, they make me feel really dorky. Like Lachlan it is. I really feel like there's going to be so many people emulating Glenn Glenda, dressing like Glenn Glenda, getting their hair cut short and dyed red like Glenn Glenda. I think people are going to love them. Yeah, I genuinely, I, I kept forgetting that 
Glenn Glenda is not two different actors. Mm -hmm. It's it's so impressive. I think they're going to be such a breakout star. And they really delineate between the two characters also. I mean, they have very separate looks. And what we do, we shoot the whole scene first with Lachlan playing Glenn. And then they go and change and come back as Glenda. We shoot the whole scene again. So a lot of times, essentially, Lachlan is acting with Lachlan. So Mm -hmm. it's like really interesting acting challenge for them as well. And do they have a stand in for eye lines or? Yes, we had a wonderful actress named Annie Tuma that would and she would act the part. So it really helped everybody else in the scene. Mm -hmm. So when there was a scene with Glenn Glenda, you would have Lachlan acting Glenn and Annie would be acting Glenda and then they would switch. And so it really helped us because we had somebody to relate to as opposed to you know tennis ball on a stick yeah for sure that's very helpful oh exactly. a black cat for halloween yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh she was i could hear her trying to rip the door off the hinges i was like oh, oh no so beautiful <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is Lucy. Hello, uh, meow, meow. Lucy, meow, say meow. hi to Jennifer Tilly. Say hi to Jennifer. Meow, meow. <laughs> she's like, where is that coming from? <laughs> she's meow. mad that she's mad that your doll has taken over her cat tower. Mm-hmm. My assistant took my ch- my Tiffany doll home because um, Tiffany's head was falling off, and it became a viral video. His dog came scooting around the corner. It was like, oh, and just started barking, and they <laughs> ran away, and they came back and tucked his tail under. It was like, rrr, rrr, and then started barking again and skidding away was that his dog was genuinely afraid of Tiffany because uh-huh. Tiffany's sort of life my Tiffany doll is sort of life size yeah yeah and she's got a very intense pair of eyes you know <laughs> yeah. just staring into your soul is there anything that you can say about future episodes without spoiling too much because I know Don is always hesitant about letting oh, too much Don's get out crazy about the spoilers sometimes I send something to Universal and say it's okay to post it and they're like post away and I oh no Don is going to like it. I sent to Don. I said, Universal said I can post this. Yeah, is that all right with you? Don, no, 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 no. Wait till the episode is over. And I think that's what it's so delightful to watch the show because there are so many surprises and there aren't hardly any leaks about things that are going to happen. So there's going to be so many insane twists and turns. There's things I think the fans are going to love, things that people will never have foreseen in a million years. Don is very creative and he's the ultimate fan. He likes to, like I said, he likes to write things and film things that he as a fan would like to see himself. So I think that's why it's remained interesting over 30 years because he never does a retread of what came before. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think this is the, the last season was so excellent. And I think that this season is even better. This season is off the hook. Yeah. Like you said, it, you know, I think he's always kind of been ahead of his time. I think people are finally so ready for what this series is. And it means so much to people. Like, I'm sure you hear it too. But, you know, like like you said, people seeing themselves represented. And it's such a fun thing. And it's not saccharine either. It's not, you know, the show does not put on the kid gloves at all. And I think that's what people really want. Yeah, it's not it's not like virtue signaling. You hear that term right. a lot. But right. it's, it's not and I trying. think that the kidding themselves up on screen, like represented by like Ali is 14 and Zach and Bjornvin, they're actual teenagers. They're, you know, 15 years old. And so I think that that's really adds to the reality too. You don't have like 30 year olds playing teenagers and Don pattern the romance between Bjornvin and Zach after his his memories of coming of age, which was harder when Don was a kid because, you know, it's harder to be a gay youth. That's why I think it really rings true. And the amazing thing is, is kids are so much more accepting of all types of sexuality, expressions of sexuality now. That I, I read a lot of the, the chatter online and everybody was just like, wow, we love Bjorn Finn and Zach. Not like, oh, ooh, you know, it was di- just really accepting, like what a wonderful story. It's similar to when Gina and I did Bound and it was very groundbreaking in its time that there were two women that happened to be in love. It wasn't really necessarily salacious and it wasn't one of them was an evil murderer, like, you know, in movies that came before, like Basic Instinct, for, mm-hmm. for example. If somebody was a lesbian, then they had to be like a murderer or yeah, like a something. Psychopath, yeah. And people would say, wow, we really like those characters and, you know, they're two, they're two people in love. They really related to them as they would a heterosexual relationship and didn't give it much thought. And I think that that's giant strides for depictions of the LGBTQ plus community in 
in film up on screen. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we love having you as part of the show. We were so excited to have you and Fiona in episode two. And then in episode three, you weren't there at all. We were like, what gives? But then it was all made up for in episode four that you get this whole campy, devoted episode. It feels very, uh, I don't know, John Waters in the camp of it all. And... God, it was fantastic. Yeah. And we're, Fiona and I are hell-bent for leather all the way to the end now. It's really exciting to see Fiona's journey, Nika's journey, and also Tiffany's journey. So if you're a Niffany fan, as uh, <laughs> as the fans call us, you've got a lot to look forward to. Excellent. That's so good to hear. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Niffany. I like that. Yeah. Well, I don't like Niffany because Tiffany cut off all her limbs. That's insane. Yes. And but it's she, not healthy. She did, it, she did it in a kind way. She thought she knew. <laughs> what was best for Nika. Maybe she was wrong, but she did it out of love. So. See, when we interviewed Fiona, I even said like, I don't know, is it so bad being kept in Jennifer Tilly's beautiful pink bedroom and being put in lovely gowns? And I don't know, it's Jennifer Tilly like making you pies or whatever. And Fiona was like, Chelsea, she chopped off my arms and legs. Yeah, I love that you're defending about? it. And Fiona's like, no, no that's insane. Jennifer, I'm right. 100% on your side. <laughs> Tiffany did I nothing wrong. I, I was surprised when I heard it read it interview with Nika and she's like I hope Nika gets revenge I'm like revenge for what <laughs> for being loved truly and deeply by Tiffany you know but I I understand uh, she's a bit myth that I did that to her and you know I'm trying to see her point of view but <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I'll be a Tiffany apologist forever and That's ever. Right. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us yes, and, and thank for you. Yeah, spending your time with us. It's been so much fun. Yeah, and just like the show, it, it's so much fun. Uh, we're halfway through it now with episode four having aired, and I can't wait to see what the back half holds because season one, I know that the first half was a lot of uh, setting the table, and then the back half was insane. And it sounds like we've got a lot in store for the second half of season two. Fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> Ready for takeoff. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thanks so much again, Yes, Jennifer. thank you so much. Yeah. Bye. 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 Have a good one. So, yeah, that happened. We interviewed Fiona Dorf and Jennifer Tilly. And uh, even even Lucy couldn't Ooh, stay away I from Jennifer Tilly. I could hear Lucy. Literally, that door was shaking in the frame. And oh, I didn't even know. I was like, what are you doing I getting kept, up? We're I talking kept, to Jennifer Tilly. I know. I kept hearing it, and I was like, you're going to hear it on the mics. Oh, my God, Lucy, please, not right now. But she needed to see Jennifer. She needed to see Jay Tills, man. Yeah. Of course. It makes sense. This is awesome. <laughs> I'm so happy we got to talk to her and that we got to talk to her about poker. Yes. That's something I've That's wanted to do That's a bucket list thing we can check out. Now off. we just got to play yeah. with her. <laughs> Right. Oh my god, and get just absolutely destroyed. What if what if you beat Jennifer Tilly with her own hand, A seven? Uh, oh my god, that'd be that would never happen. <laughs> but it would be pretty cool. Yeah. We're halfway through the season, like I just said, and so we've got four more episodes. I can't wait to see what's in store with that little bastard Chucky and all the craziness that's going on. So tune in next week for another one of these. Uh, I'm not sure who we're talking to, but I'm sure it'll be great. Yes. Yeah. yeah. See you next time. Bye.